Welcome to the first lesson. We're going to be talking about Plato's The Republic. Now, if you were to just go onto Google and type in the name of this course, Democracy and Tyranny, you are most likely going to come across a reference to Plato's Republic, because this is the first book uh, in Western tradition that attempts to define different types of governments. And it is considered a real kind of cornerstone of the Western intellectual tradition. Plato, probably one of the most famous philosophers in history, maybe the most famous philosopher in history, was the pupil of Socrates. Socrates, uh, who came up with the so-called Socratic method, did not write down his own teachings but they were written down by Plato, his um, number one student. And what Socrates did was he would ask lots and lots of questions and in the belief that uh, individuals had within them access to this deep knowledge and truth, but that it needed to be brought out through education and that the, and that the uh, central function of education was teaching people how to ask uh, really difficult questions and to think through things until they came to deeper understanding. So um, it's a great, I think, a, a, an excellent way of thinking about education, that it's not trying to just reach a set number of answers and then boom, finished, but rather it's about a lifelong process of asking questions. So that's the tradition, the Socratic tradition embodied in Plato's writing. Now, this particular text that we're looking at, The Republic, this, in order to understand it, you need to know that it was written uh, in the wake of the Peloponnesian War by an Athenian philosopher, Plato, and the Athenians had lost the war to the Spartans. And the Spartans had a form of government that we would today call something like fascism, probably. They were a very militaristic, um, hierarchical society. The Athenians, on the other hand, had a form of democracy. It would not be considered democracy by our standards today because only male Athenian citizens were allowed to vote, but it was nevertheless much closer to democracy than what the Spartans had. But the Athenians had lost the war. So why had they lost the war? Well, Plato, obviously in the back of his mind or in the front of his mind and maybe even in the middle of his mind, uh, suspected that democracy had something to do with this, so he did not believe that democracy was the best system in the world. And that comes through quite clearly when you read this text. And uh, that background that I've just given will help you sort of contextualize why is he somewhat antagonistic and suspicious of democracy. But before we get to the book in which he defines the different types of government, which is book eight, you're going to read book seven, as I've marked out on the syllabus. Book seven, the reason you need to read that is because it contains in it the uh, allegory of the cave, which is probably the most famous section from Plato's Republic. If people have just read one thing from the Republic, it tends to be the allegory of the cave. Now, this is about education. And it's an extended metaphor that, or an allegory, really, that describes the initial state that human beings are in, which is a state of complete and utter ignorance, a level of ignorance that is so deep and profound that they or we who are in that state do not even realize how extremely ignorant we are. We are like these people that are chained up in a cave and all we can see are the shadows moving against the wall. And, and education then is the process of being unchained, ripped up from this position, going out into the world and seeing that what you thought was reality are actually just the shadows of movers being projected onto the cave wall. This is one of the most famous images in literary and philosophical history. So I want you to read through that whole book and have a look and see how he extends this allegory. Then have a look and pay attention to what he is saying about the people who become educated. Because in Plato's mind, he was a both, it seems, a kind of elitist, but also someone who believed that human potential, human ability should... Um, 
underlie the hierarchy that would exist in the society. That there would be certain people who were naturally kind of capable or destined of being educated and that those people should then become the leaders. So the ones who had the greatest capacity were the ones who would go through this difficult task of, of becoming educated and learning. But then they should not become tyrannical. They should not become dangerous and use their power and education against the people, but rather they should become um, good, generous, uh, altruistic leaders who put the, the interest of the other people ahead of themselves. So I'm going to go and read through this. Now then, once you've read book seven, move on to book eight. And book eight deals directly with what we're talking about in this course, which is democracy and tyranny. And Plato outlines five different forms of government. Okay. And he outlines these different governments, and he also talks about the kinds of individuals who you would find living uh, underneath these different regimes. So, um, at the very top, he has this concept of aristocracy. And aristocracy is the rule of the best. And the rule of the best are the, are the, are the individuals that I was referring to in Book 7, those who are innately capable of learning and who can become these like elitist members of this ruling class and in Plato's sort of fantastical society that he's creating they would rule justly and their rule would be the best type of possible rule. Um, then you have a decline from aristocracy and this is where to modern readers some of Plato's ideas become pretty strange uh, because he talks about this sort of uh, like almost interbreeding between who, who the people who were destined to be in this top class with people who were not quite destined or capable of being in this top class and so the ruling class begins to decline and this moves down into something that he calls democracy. And this is um, the rule that he saw existing in Sparta. So it's still a top-down rule. But the rulers are no longer quite as intellectually capable as they would have been in the previous form of government, the, um, the uh, aristocracy, which is the rule of the best. So declines from aristocracy to democracy. Then next it moves down into oligarchy. Now you're probably familiar with that term. Oligarchy is the rule of the rich and powerful, like a group of uh, individual powerful wealthy families who rule in their own interest. And But because they are um, wealthy and powerful, and because they are somewhat descended in his mind from these elitist people who used to rule in the aristocracy, it's still a slightly better version than that which comes after it. And that which comes after it is democracy. So notice this on a ladder that goes from one all the way down to five, which we still got to get to, second to the bottom was democracy. This is what Plato said. This is where he was placing democracy because he said that the individuals who were now given the power were not really suited to the task of making these decisions, which to us may sound elitist and you know, maybe a little bit crazy. But remember again that he is writing in the in the aftermath of a war where a democracy lost to a top down ruled state. Okay. Finally, though, it goes from democracy to the very last rung, the worst of all, which is tyranny. And that's the government that he describes as being the worst. It emerges naturally from the democracy. He says, because in a democracy, people have absolute freedom. Everybody can have maximum number of rights. Everybody demands maximum number of rights. Everybody does whatever they want to do. Society becomes so free that there's this almost like unconscious yearning for the opposite of that freedom. And so the society then swings all the way back to tyranny. And how does it get there? Well, it's he, he puts forward this idea that a strong man emerges, a powerful person who will say, 
I will save you, people. I will save you from what you have become. And this leader is the tyrannical man. And he pretends to be good. He pretends to be helping the people. He pretends to be for the people. But in actual fact, he is a tyrant and he is against the people. And he becomes like a wolf. So he pretends to be a savior, but he turns out to be a destroyer. And this is the very worst form of government tyranny. So I want you to read through this. I want you to think about what Plato is saying, what he's arguing for. Remember, keep in mind the historical context in which he's writing. But at the same time, feel free to push back against his ideas. You don't have to accept everything he says. In fact, you shouldn't accept everything he says. He wouldn't want you to. Um, but before you push back against ideas, make sure that you've understood them, right? Read, read with the text first. Make sure you clearly get what he is saying in these points. And then put forward your own ideas. I look forward to reading your responses. Thank you.